Okay, it was my good fortune to be to to come to Rafi's group back in 1971, I think it was. And the years spent there were really fantastic years. I mean, I won't say much about myself, but the group of students you had there at that time, I think there's any scientist would be envious of you for that group of students. And for, this, for us, this was a wonderful period of time with Rafi as advisor and things going on and information theory coming out. And uh, so, Rafi, thank you for that period. Our first speaker today is going to be Noam Agmon. He's there hiding. Uh, I'm sorry, the title is unknown, but uh, you'll give it to us. Luckily, I passed. So <clears throat> what I learned from Rafi is a lot of gas phase of molecular phone. dynamics. And uh, in recent years, I came back to uh, gas phase mole molecular dynamics. So we have here a, a talk on uh, protonated water clusters, but just the smallest ones um, that you see here. The proton here is in the center, and here and here with a number of water molecules not exceeding four. And what you see here are, uh, is, is the global energy, a minimal energy structure. <clears throat> and they are important in various areas, of course, in gas phase chemistry, atmospheric chemistry, but also in solution phase chemistry. Um, they are relevant to aqueous solutions, perhaps, and here is a debate from our colleagues in Germany. Manfred Eigen proposed that hydronium is solvated by three water molecules. Now we call it the Eigen cation. And that this is the main form of proton in liquid water. Whereas uh, Georg Zundel propose that it is a protonated water dimer, which is further solvated by <coughs> four water molecules, and this is called the Zundel cation uh, nowadays. <coughs> and mobility of excess proton in liquid water is probably uh, due to interchange or uh, isomerization between the two cations, where you have an eigen cation here that by just by changing the structure of the hydrogen bonds around it can be arranged to a Zundel core sort of cation as an intermediate. And then this is arranged to a eigencation on the other oxygen, on the other water molecule. So this eigencation is in the left, on the left water molecule, and that one is around the right water molecule. And this is maybe what attributes to the exceedingly fast proton mobility in liquid water. <clears throat> uh, maybe it explains, maybe these clusters explain the spectrum of uh, aqueous acids. For example, this paper in Science by Tokmakov from Chicago. <clears throat> so what you see here is liquid water IR spectrum in blue protonated water IR spectrum in red. There are different spectrum here in black, which characterizes the contribution from the proton in the liquid water. And you see some bands here and here. It's hard to see the colors, but the pink shaded area, which includes this band on the right and this band here on the left, <coughs> are attributed to Zandel cation stretch and bend. And in between, there is a region that's attributed to the eigencation. So both cations contribute not only to the mobility, but probably also to the spectroscopy, to the infrared spectroscopy of protons in water. Or maybe not. There are other points of view. For example, Charles Reed would say that actually the protonated water trimer <coughs> were three water molecules are intimately linked to uh, uh, one proton is the dominant structure of a proton in aqua solution. And indeed, for example, we have here a cartoon of experimental results, results from Beersheva, from uh, Udi Pines, who is taking uh, just traces of water in acetonitrile and added acid. <coughs> 
And then you can, by uh, IR, find that you have different clusters, like the monomer of protonated water, the dimer, the zandel cation inside a microscopic droplet of, of water inside the isotonitrate. And indeed, the trimer plays an important role. And here you see like the two resonance structures of the trimer. But <coughs> also in proteins, you see a lot of protonated water which play sometimes an important role in the dynamics of the protein. For example, this is bacterial rhodopsin, which a lot of you know, the role is to transfer a proton from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane, subsequent to absorption of a photon. <clears throat> so there is a chromophore, which is a retinal up here, and you can see in the IR or in the, yeah, in the IR, this also comes from a nature paper from a group of Gerbert in Germany. You can see, for example, here the protonated uh, water trimer, and the proton then moves, of course, from here to other positions in the retina. <clears throat> so this says that there's maybe a lot of interest to understand the fundamental physics and the fundamental chemistry of protonated water. And this subject has undergone rapid development, which is almost a revolution in the last decade or two. <clears throat> and there is uh, improvements in vibrational predissociation methods, starting from Yuan Li, who introduced the messenger method. Of course, there are technical improvements, like the valve of Uzi Evan, which everybody uses now. Uh, and there is an ex extended spectral range. First, people looked only at the blue side, at the OH stretches, and now are in two stages. First, it was possible to go below 2,000 wave numbers, a lot of work from the group of Mark Johnson and Yale. And more recently, by using the free electron laser in Germany, for example, the group of, group of Knut Asmus could go below, below 1,000 wave numbers. So there's a lot of detail coming out and begging for explanation. So you would think that such a small system is very easy to understand. You don't even need to do a theory. All you need is experimentalist intuition. But this is dangerous. This is not quite so. So the theory is not easy on the one hand. First of all, the, pro the shared proton <coughs> excursions are very large, and he samples the anamonic parts of the potential energy surface. Uh, so you need accurate potentials, not only near the minima of the potential energy surfaces, but also far away from the minima, which is difficult to obtain with spe spectroscopic accuracy. And then, Hydrogen is very light, is the lightest atom. So you have so many hydrogens around, there are quantum effects, and the nuclear quantum effects are hard to uh, simulate, <coughs> uh, particularly quantum effects that I'm talking about are zero point energy and tunneling. <coughs> and you would like to describe the system at various temperatures. So most of the uh, theoretical systems for most of the theoretical system, it is difficult to, to obtain the dependence on, on temperature. So I will very briefly just mention uh, a few of the theoretical methods that you may have or may not have heard of. So of course, harmonic normal modes is part of the physics course. Uh, and if you, is, is a static method around the minimum of the potential energy surface assuming that the potential is quadratic. So you don't have, therefore, any anharmonicity. The potential is not accurate to large distances from the minima. You can have nuclear quantum effects, but then you don't have the temperature effect. So you can go to anharmonic methods. For example, second order vibrational perturbation theory can give very accurate results can take account of their anharmonicity in terms of expansion up to fourth order. It depends on the potentials that you use. You can have quantum effects. You don't have temperature effects. But it can be very sensitive to things like resonances. If two states have similar energies, a perturbation expansion can blow up. So some of the modes can be described well. Some, some may not be described well. 
And how do you obtain poten uh, uh, accurate enough potential energy surfaces? So force fields that are used in biology are way less accurate than what is required for spectroscopic <coughs> accuracy. So you can go to the next level of solving the electron uh, problem quantum mechanically in a simplified method, not with wave functions, but with density functional method. <coughs> uh, this is sometimes accurate enough, but sometimes even this is not accurate enough. Uh, very recently, there is an effort to obtain analytic, very accurate potential energy surfaces, both for water and for protonated water. For example, Joel Bauman and uh, uh, Francesco Pesani. Uh, so this can be more accurate, but because you don't have the density, you don't have the dipole moment, and so you have to come up also with the dipole moment surface in this case. So in both, from both potentials, you can, you can use the first method, or you can use, like I remember I did with Rafi, just run classical trajectories, <coughs> You can run classical trajectories and calculate the dipole moment autocorrelation function, Fourier transform it, and then you get the, uh, the spectrum. But because of this classical, there are no nuclear quantum effects. On the other hand, you can get the temperature effect. So you can try to run quantum dynamics, like pass integral molecular, molecular dynamics. But unfortunately, there are huge errors as you go to low temperatures below 230K. So you see every method has some problems, and the sim problem is not simple theoretical. But also the experiments are very challenging because you don't see only fundamental bands like for uh, covalent bonds that we are taught in chemistry labs. There are a lot of combination bands and overtones that can be strong and compete in strengths with the fundamentals. So this is partly due to Fermi resonances so what is a Fermi resonance? Uh, if you have a combination band or an overtone over here, you normally it's very weak. But if accidentally it's very close in energy or in frequency to a fundamental which is strong, then the combination band borrows intensity uh, and becomes strong. And also they separate from one another, and then you see very strong bands, and you ask yourself, is this a fundamental, or is this a, fun a combination band undergoing Fermi resonance? And there's no, it's not written on their foreheads, you know, well, what's going on. So let me start now after this introduction with a protonated water dimer. Here is a great success of both experiment and seer, because there is a nice agreement. So this I took for a recent paper also from the Johnson labs, the four, four bottom spectra are experimental spectra. And I mentioned very briefly the messenger method, which allows both to cool the clusters and to measure very accurate the IR spectra using mass spectroscopy. So in, in this direction, you see the messenger atom, argon, neon, helium, becomes lighter, and the spectrum looks more like the bare spectrum of the gas phase uh, cluster. And then it's very similar to what was calculated here by the Mayer group. It's a full dimensional so-called multi-correlation time dependent heart rate, which solves the Schrodinger equation for the nuclear in the time domain. So this you can do for a very few atom system and you get very nice agreement. And now you see <coughs> the surprises from here. So you have a doublet on, uh, on the right, on the blue. So this has a symmetric and asymmetric stretch of the flanking water molecules. But you have this doublet. What is it due to? This is <coughs> a Fermi resonance between the red band, which is a proton transfer mode, is a proton in the center that rattles between the two oxygen atoms. So we abbreviate it PTM. But it comes close in energy to a combination band, and this was discovered from this theoretical paper, of the OO stretch, the change in the hydrogen bond length, and the WAG of the water molecule. A WAG is when the actor does something like this, so this is a WAG, and it is coupled, and it, come, it is excited together with the OO stretch, 
and they two, the two have the same symmetry as a condition for having a Fermi resonance. And then you have, you see that it gains in intensity and it's almost as, almost as intense as the fundamentum. <clears throat> so here is a nice success and we go to the next cluster. Aha, it's difficult. This is <clears throat> the protonated water trimer. So you have two shared proton, protons and this is one of the proton transfer modes. And you would think that this mode would allow to, for example, transfer protons through this water network very, very, very fast if it's the dominant mode of the cluster. So it's interesting to look at this IR of this cluster, and here is uh, uh, the history in a nutshell. Schwartz in 1997 said, that the, where is the trans proton transfer mode? Schwartz said it's around 2,300. In 2005, the Johnson group first reported the spectrum that expands, extends below 2,000. You see, they see a, a broad band around the Schwartz frequency, but they also saw a very narrow band around 1880, and this was the dominant band in the spectrum, so they said, aha, this must be the proton transfer mode, because the proton transfer mode moves the charge, so it should have a very strong intensity in the IR. <coughs> but this was based partly on intuition. So 10 years later, meaning or more than 10 years later, just a few months ago. <clears throat> the same group with Joel Be Bowman team together, and you see the experiment here, and you see this region before. Is it? Okay, the 2,300 band is A5, and the new band that they saw is A8, but now there are more bands here, and the spectrum has a lot of details. So this is the OH stretches, of the flanking water, of the water on the cent of the o of free OH on, on the central uh, oxygen. And these are complicated to explain. These are bands. This is the umbrella mode. So here comes the analytic potential of Joel Bowman. So they had to change the parameters in the potential to get this good agreement. And they see a very promising agreement with <coughs> Uh, the observed spectrum. So everything is fine and we can be happy, but what, where is then the proton transfer mode? Is it mode A8 like it was assumed? No, I mean they see that this mode is contributed by a series of different transitions. So many different modes and combination bands, they all contribute at the same frequency, so we are in a situation that we don't know how to assign the frequency and we don't know where the proton transfer mode is. So <clears throat> therefore, we thought, okay, let's go and do uh, the VPT2, second order vibrational perturbation sp spectrum, uh, so using for potential uh, wave function uh, quantum chemistry level, which is a bit more accurate with, D with DFT. And for both, sorry, for both the hydrated and the protonated uh, clusters, I'll show you the, uh, the spectra for the deuterated cluster as well. This actually gives to our surprise and to everybody's surprise a fantastic agreement with experiment and therefore we put it in the special issue honoring uh, Rafi Levine, and these are the spectra. So the blue lines on the top are for the hydrated isomer. I remind you, the protonated water trimer, and this is the deuterated one. <clears throat> and the fundamentals, so the spectra calculated is a stick spectra, the fundamentals are the black, black lines, and the Schwartz band appears in the same place like he predicted in 1977. And the most intense band that was uh, seen later <coughs> is now seen to be a combination band and some agreement to Joel Bauman saying that it's a combination of a lot of things. And then you go to the deuterated species, so if you just look at the spectra, you, I mean, the experimentalists would, I mean, they say, actually they said, I mean, this band looks like this band and this looks like that. So it looks like the same, but with an added peak. But when you do the theory, it's not exactly so. What happens is that this combination band that surprisingly is the most intense 
band in the whole spectrum lost some of intensity and moved to the red, and now it's over here. And the proton transfer mode, which was weak for the aquated cluster, now, when you deuterate it, does become the most uh, intense uh, spectrum in the cluster. So this, we claim, is a sign for a Fermi resonance, which is very, very strong over here. And so the combination is abnormally strong, and the uh, proton and the fundamental moves away very far from the combination. And here the coupling is, is less, and therefore <coughs> the combination is still enhanced, but is less than the uh, fundamental. <coughs> so, okay, so then the A8 band is actually contributed from a, a actually due to a Fermi resonance with the proton transfer mode, which is in the same position predicted in 1977. And this is the combination band, you can see it here. It's a combination of the umbrella mode and the rocking mode. So now it's this sort of mode uh, <coughs> of the central hydronium in this cluster. And now you see that the combination has the same symmetry as a fundamental. How do you see this? Put a mirror perpendicular to the board. So this is symmetric, and this mode is anti-symmetric for reflection. And the combination is therefore going to be anti-symmetric like the proton transfer mode, and they can go and, uh, and um, enter into resonance. So the last thing <coughs> is that when you go to the tetramer, there are now many isomers. For example, this isomer is just two and a half Oh, sorry, two and a half kilocalories higher in energy. But what we find in a different method using ab initio molecular dynamics that I mentioned before, so I won't go into it in detail, we find that the spectrum may arise actually from a different, from, from a combination of the two isomers. Because if you take just the eigencation, there's one prominent band here for the hydrogen bonded OH. But if you take the Zandel cation, you see this band, but also you see this, all the bands below 2,000, which are missing for the Eigen cation, but they are there uh, for the Zandel cation. OK, with this controversial result, so yeah, the Eigen cation versus the Zandel cation for the protonated water uh, tetramer. So, OK, what, um, what we see here is that the low frequency modes are contributed from the Zandel core over here. For example, this is the proton transfer mode inside the Zandel core. So this is, with this controversial results, we go to something not controversial. And this is, again, Rafi Levine, who created uh, the Center of uh, Excellence in Jerusalem. So I wish him 80 more years of uh, fruitful uh, scientific research. And thank you for your attention.